French scientist Emmanuel Mahi Chabanier won this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry, along with her American colleague Jennifer Dutna, for developing a revolutionary method of altering DNA. Their tool is called the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system. It has, for the very first time, enabled scientists to make precise changes in the long DNA stretches that make up the code of life for many organisms, including people. The method has been used to transform agriculture, to aid in new cancer therapies, and to help cure inherited diseases. Chabonier and also Dudna also made history as the first ever pair of women to receive the Nobel Prize for chemistry together. Recently, I had the chance to talk to Ms. Chabonier, who is the founding scientific and managing director of the Max Planck Unit for the Science of Pathogens in Berlin. Among many things, we talked about the past that led to her Nobel Prize winning career, the COVID-19 pandemic, and what it is like to be a woman in her field. And she also shares with me some tricks about how to manage time. Let's listen in. Emanuela, what a pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. I want to ask you whether you want to be introduced as a Nobel laureate for 2020 or the female Nobel laureate for 2020. Which would you prefer? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Maybe, maybe the female Nobel laureate, indeed. Why? Because, um, because actually not, not a lot of, of female uh, scientists have been uh, awarded uh, uh, the Nobel Prize so far. And this year, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to two female scientists. So I think it's, it's worth to mention. Mm. But it's also worth to mention what you have been doing in your field. Tell me more about your research. How did you start in that direction? Oh, my line of research has always focused on the understanding of bacterial diseases, how bacteria cause diseases in humans, and focusing on really the molecular mechanisms they use to, to survive the environment. Mm -hmm. And within this line of, of research, uh, I got interested in a, in a class of molecules that are called RNA, so maybe the people are familiar with RNA um, because of the mRNA vaccines that are mentioned in the media against uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2. So I have always been interested in uh, yeah, different types of, of molecules, including RNA. And this led me actually to a, a mechanism that allows to understand how bacteria defend themselves against viruses. And this has, has led to a, a an immune system existing in bacteria that is called CRISPR-Cas. Mm -hmm. And the deep study of this mechanism has led to this uh, transformative technology that uh, allows to recode uh, the life and that allows to edit and engineer genes in cells and organisms. So it has a, a transformative role in life sciences, biotechnology, and biomedicine. Being someone in the field, what do you make of the current pandemic we're experiencing right now, arguably one of the worst hundred years at least? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a lesson at least that shows us that it is very critical to, to really, um, let's say, put a lot of emphasis on, on basic research. And it's also, I think, a wake-up call with regard to really the urgent need to continue to do research in infectious diseases, even increase the budget for infectious diseases. I mean, this is a field of research that is not that fashionable mm. for young scientists who tend to turn more to human genetics or brain diseases or cancer diseases. Yeah. And uh, we start to lose a little bit the expertise in, in really pure microbiology, bacteriology and virology. And, and I think it is, uh, it is essential because 
the story of SARS-CoV-2 also allows us to understand that you know you have a, a, an evolution of the microbes from their ability to not be virulent to their ability to to cause diseases in animals and then an evolution that uh, that allows them to cause diseases in humans and and this is uh, really critical to maintain this this research do you feel somewhat relieved at least to a certain extent that you know, there are more and more people that would understand what you are exactly talking about, the importance of the field uh, as we are experiencing pandemic. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that it allows as well uh, the public and the politicians and uh, other, you know, relevant bodies to, to really um, understand the, the critical point of of basic research or so understand that you know natural processes can um, yeah can can rule our world whether this will be climate change or this will be a you know a tiny virus yes. <laughs> changing uh, our lives and also i think it's i believe it's also re a reflection with regard to the fact that people underestimate to which extent the last 50 years uh, have uh, witnessed large developments in medicine. And I think everyone was thinking that, yeah, one can live, you know, nicely because in any case there are vaccines. But mm -hmm. I think this virus uh, reminds everyone that uh, evolution <laughs> is evolution and yeah. that, uh, yeah, and that it's, uh, it's important to carry on to, to maintain expertise in, in various fields of life sciences and biomedicine to to be able to cope with challenges that may, may sound unexpected. Having said that though, you yeah. know, Emanuela, there is a lot of debate about the virus and the stuff like that. We don't want to go into details, but as a scientist, how do you see this debate? First of all, we have seen more discoveries of the virus existing in blood samples, for example, long before or at least a few weeks before the all known reported date of uh, the virus when it was found in China. Uh, the, the U.S. has been reporting about that of the American cases and European countries mm -hmm. and also. Mm -hmm. How do you see you know, the, the, tricky, the trickiness of virus and whether we will eventually at all be able to trace back about what exactly happened from animal to human being, how that jump was done? I, I believe that epidemiological studies are, are very important in, in that case. Yes. And for example, if you look at, at uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, all over the world, the, the authorities have been overwhelmed by the number of cases and have not always followed very, you know, intensively the epidemiology of the virus. Right. Uh, also taking into account the, you know, the, the, the data of, of the patients and trying to understand you know, the evolution of, of diseases, why some patients, you know, are, are more uh, affected than others, you know, is it due to a, a genetic background? So there are some studies in this regard, but, mm. and, and I, I believe that, that, that this would help as well. You know, it's always, you know, it's always difficult to, to trace back because yes. it's, it's about also <laughs> digging into the nature. And, and the thing is that, you know, that's the point. You deal with evolution of viruses. So if now you look at something, it could be that it has already evolved in, in the host you, you look at in nature. Yeah. So that's why I think it, it, it just tells us that it's important to really emphasize this type of research that is to observe, observe the microbial world, mm -hmm. observe its evolution and being able to track it and to record it properly. Yeah. And this would uh, allow in the future when there is a, f a future pan pandemic to, yeah, to have more and more data to look at and trying to understand where it comes from. Another question uh, related to this is about mm -hmm. the vaccine. Since you've been doing a lot of research in the field, uh, you know, RNA vaccine together with others, how do you see the qualities of vaccine, uh, vaccine being researched within a year? Will that be the solution for us in terms of dealing with the COVID-19? But let's say uh, the, the vaccine is a, is a huge step, surely. Uh, now, uh, you know, the future will tell us uh, how long the, the immunity with this vaccine lasts. Yeah. Uh, the future will tell us whether 
you know, whether the virus <laughs> will uh, evolve nevertheless, you know, based on, on, uh, on the implementation of the vaccine, will react by, by uh, you know, evolving. So this, you, the future will tell us. And, and I guess, you know, it's always a challenge of how to, to vaccinate, uh, you know, the, the population of the world. So I think we will have to live for a number of months whereby there will still be the requirement to, to wear masks. Mm. This, I guess, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, go around it. As you earlier mentioned, there were yeah. some losing of great talents in the field. How would you still be able to keep the spirit? You know, your field is not the dearest baby uh, that, you know, the world is looking at today. It is true that for me to continue in, to, to really be able to uh, perform um, basic research in the field of microbiology and infectious diseases, mm -hmm. uh, I had to go through mobility in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, I made my career by taking opportunities of offers at, uh, you know, other institutions that would offer me better conditions at the time where, you know, where I was, the conditions were maybe not optimal for, with my regard. So, um, it's a lot of persistence with regard to, yeah, to, to trying to, to find ways to continue the research, also the recruitment, which is not always uh, easy to recruit uh, junior scientists. Uh, it, it is also very rewarding. I mean, uh, for sure, in, in my case, I was awarded the Nobel Prize, but even without prizes, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very specific um, um, it's very specific to be scientist in our days. It's, it's, I know, it's a lot of internationality, working with people. It's, yeah. it's, it's very enjoyable. What was it like for a scientist and a female scientist like you to survive and thrive despite of all of that? Uh, I, I remember I, I have had four mentors during my PhD and postdoc time, two male scientists and two female scientists. And, mm -hmm. and my uh, female mentors were as... Uh, told me that, you know, I, w I would have to be ready in the future to be transparent <laughs> and, and to deal with a situation that, that um, you know, people will see me uh, when, when maybe they need me, but otherwise they, they, will, not, they will not, you know, they will not see uh, the, the female scientists around and, and, and the decisions will be, will be made, you know, uh, behind the doors, not specifically involving everyone. Mm. Uh, so th this is something that I've experienced. Uh, but also was with regard to my perseverance, I can, can recall my experience in, in Vienna before I moved to Sweden. This was at the time where I started my research on CRISPR, actually. Yeah. And I could not see really a, a future that would allow me to, to grow in Vienna. So I decided to, to apply to other places. And I found Umeo as uh, the best place where I could do the research uh, that I wanted to do at the time. And I remember that I really went to Umeo and I, I was not that young at that time. I was uh, nearly 40 years old. And in addition, I was going for not a stable position, but mm. uh, a five-year uh, contract, which was maybe not um, something that a lot of my colleagues would have uh, expected yeah. uh, at that time. And, and actually, it's true that I, I gave myself two, <laughs> two possibilities, the one to succeed or the one to maybe not succeed. But if I was succeeding, it, it would have to be a good success and I guess uh, my research evolved very well when I moved to Sweden because this is the research that got awarded uh, the Nobel Prize in chemistry of this year so yeah <laughs> so it, it's good to be perseverant mm. but of course you didn't know at that time you would win one prize after another it's not the only prize you won you also won many other prizes including uh, yes. for uh, uh, you know women mm -hmm. scientists like the uh, the L'Oreal Prize for women scientists around the world but yes. having yes. said that yes. though you know there's always the issue, people would ask women, about so-called work and the life balance. As a scientist, particularly doing basic research, you know how much strenuous effort you have to put, how much time, how much energy, how much devotion you have mm -hmm. to put it out there. How do you see that question people always ask the women? Yes, I, um, I mean, you know, this question, you know, this applies for female and male scientists as well, because I have a lot of male colleagues who are, you know, let's say 35, 40 years old who start their team and then they have kids and it's also an issue for them. Yeah. Um, I think uh, 
what saves me as well is to be extremely organized and um, also because I moved quite a bit around, <laughs> yes. uh, I, I learned to be very efficient and to grasp uh, fast, uh, you know, what I what um, I have to do to try to simplify processes. Actually, mm. uh, I, I often, <laughs> you know, people try to make things more complex than they are, and I always try to simplify them. Uh, simplification does not mean, uh, you know, a lack of sophistication. I always refer to the CRISPR-Cas system. Mm -hmm. That is the reason why I was awarded the prize. And it's, it's, a, it's a system existing in nature that is very simple in, 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 the, in the principle, yet sophisticated. You know, I, I think it's important to, to try, and this is what I learned over time, actually, to try to see the essential of, of, of an issue when an issue comes to you. Tell me more about which fields are you looking at when it comes to science in China? Um, I think actually your country is, is uh, actually doing quite well in, in the field of infectious diseases and I think at least understanding that it's important to maintain this field of research and I hope that it will uh, continue because this is a, a, a field of research that is, uh, you know, needs uh, support. I believe maybe it will it will wake up also you know some interest in this field of research mm. for for young kids in uh, you know in your country absolutely um, which I, I, I would be happy <laughs> about um, because you know the more kids in the world um, you know will develop an interest in science the the, the better the the future world will be yeah, absolutely <laughs> before we go final question how to be both a very efficient and devoted scientist, while at the same time uh, be able to uh, maintain, as we always want to, the beauty both from outside and also from within. <laughs> um, let's put it that way. Uh, I, obviously, I am who I am, um, but I, I love think it. it's what you just uh, said. I, like, I am who I am, <laughs> and that's a beauty in itself already. Yes. Go ahead. But uh, I, I try to keep an integrity in, in what I'm doing and also this is a, a question of respect for either what I do or with the people I interact with. So I think it's, it's a, it's a, I, think I, I value quite highly uh, respect, dignity and integrity. All right. Well, the effective, very efficient Luella that I meet today. Thank you so much, <laughs> Emmanuel Lamahi Chavonier, uh, Nobel Laureate in Chemistry for the year 2020. What a pleasure. I'm looking forward, Emmanuel, for your coming to China.